thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. Whoa. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm, I'm reporting live from Fort Hood, Texas, uh, in Colleen, and uh, I'm on this covert mission. Uh, you want to know the name of the mission? Absolutely. Yes. Well, it won't be covert if I told you the name. Come on now. <laughs> but yeah, it's, op it's Oper Operation Pizza Taco. And so um, we're, we're actually having a free concert down here at Fort Hood uh, for, for the folks here in the local area. We're bringing on uh, some country superstars, uh, Lee Bryce and the Eli Young Band. So uh, if you're in Fort Hood tomorrow, free concert, come on down. But today, man, we got an amazing guest today. And um, so let me stop yapping. And uh, without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is an accomplished actor. He's best known for his roles as Chris Bartlow on the HBO series The Wire and as Larry Brown on the HBO series The Deuce. He's here today to give a military exclusive peek into his career and his role as Julian Carson on FX's action fact series, The Old Man. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Benga Akina Bay. Hey. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> so, Banga, how you doing? Uh, how, how did Kiana do on your on your last name? Because we, you know, we were well, struck. We were struck. Well. I was, I was Kiana, impressed. Y'all did your homework. I can tell. <laughs> we, we did. We, we was YouTube and a whole bunch of stuff, man, to make sure we got it right. <laughs> but it's a pleasure to meet you uh, today. And uh, can you let our viewers know where you're coming to us from? Sure, I am coming from. I'm coming to you all from the Thames, right off the Thames in London, England. Um, yeah, just from across the pond, as they say. <laughs> so we so we got an international chief chat today. Like this, we don't get a lot of international chief chats going on. So we appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was excited to be here. I love that. And then being at acting was not your first path. You graduated from Bucknell University in 2000 with a political science and English degree. You then worked for the federal government after graduating. What did you do in Washington? And when did you realize you wanted to change your career path? Well, that's interesting because, well, I went, to, I went to Bucknell on a wrestling scholarship. And so that's what I wanted to do throughout school and when I graduated. Um, and while I was, when I graduated, I was sorting out possible opportunities to earn positions on teams that sponsor folks who are training for international competitions and, and hopefully the Olympics one day. Um, and so in the meantime, I took a position at the, with the federal government, uh, the Corporation for National Service. It's the headquarters of AmeriCorps, VISTA, and CCCC. Uh, I was a congressional, congressional um, legislative assistant in the Congressional Affairs Department in that agency. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was cool. I loved it because it was about service and it was about helping people who, who are helping other helping people throughout the nation um through different forms of service uh and but dc dc is a it's an interesting place you learn a lot real quick <laughs> i was like oh this is not at all what they what they what they what they say it is on television and i you know i i never bought into like the you know the image of like the you know Things are always as they are represented on television with our lawmakers and so on. But when you work in DC, it's like a, it's a, it's an interesting beast. So I learned a lot, and I was, I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so there, there's that. <laughs> um, and I just got curious about acting. Someone had mentioned it to me in passing, and it wasn't. I, I it just I, I was fascinated by the, this world I knew nothing about, yeah, you know, except you know television, and um, which was my babysitter that, that growing up. So I. I, I was a consumer, but I never really thought of it as something that people did as an art or a job. And so I just started doing research, buying books and, and a whole bunch of things. That's awesome. 
So speaking of DC connections, I'm a big fan of Wale. And for those who don't know, Grammy nominated rapper Wale is actually your cousin. Um, so Wale has mentioned how his parents weren't impressed with his rapper aspirations early on. So what was the conversation like with your parents when you decided to take a different path and become an actor? You know, it, I, I expected the same, but I had been in so much trouble growing up and in and out of trouble and, and, and places where you send kids in trouble and so on. So the fact that I, you know, fell backwards into this wrestling scholarship and, and then went to college and finished it. And so I, I had already outperformed expectations, including my own. So, and, and then I had this good government job. So when I, when I told my mother I was going to pursue this, she's like, yeah, at least you're not in jail. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. The, the, the trick is setting expectations way, way low. Yeah, so, and then you know, going up from there. Right. That's funny. That's the story of my life. The story of my life is, <laughs> is, is, is setting the expectations super low so, so I can literally do uh, the world record hurdling over all the goals that I set for my life. So, uh, <laughs> So yeah, man, I I'm glad that 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 that's shared by by a lot more people than myself. Uh, oh yeah. But we but we're super glad that you chose. Uh, well, I, I don't know how good or bad you were at wrestling. I'm sure you were pretty good to get a scholarship. Uh, but we we're absolutely thrilled that you're uh, an actor. And so you starred on Broadway. You've acted in a, several feature films. And of course, er everybody knows The Wire, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, that's a classic, classic, classic show. Um, and fans to this day still stream it and watch it like it just came out, you know, last week or something. So, uh, and Chris Parlow was one of your first recurring roles that you portrayed on that season. So, how how did that experience shape your acting career? Oh wow! I, I, to be honest, initially it spoiled me because the show was so good and the cast we had such a bond um, and the writing was so like at it, such a high level that it it made it difficult after that show to to you know because not all the not all my experiences were like that afterwards and then i had to like realize that not most of the experiences won't be like that this was a very rare um um opportunity um and it was a, a family that i got um like as far as the wire family with material that that i felt very proud to to be a part of so i had to make i had to tell myself like you know if i keep comparing each job I do, each, each each project to the wire, I'm going to be a very unhappy individual. So I had to find the things that that made those jobs, you know, special that are on their own and not compare it to the wire. Um, and that helped that it's like continue to develop uh, as an actor, looking to maintain a, a career that I was happy with. And in your latest series, The Old Man, which I as soon as people in my life found out that I was going to talk to you, all the questions about this show started coming to me to ask you, which we will get to later. Um, but your latest series, The Old Man, is a hit, 100% a hit, and it has been renewed for a second season. Congratulations. Um, you. And you star alongside Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow, playing the role of Julian Carson, um, what is it like working with Jeff and John? It's it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it's just it's absolutely it's ridiculous. I'm I'm on set with these guys. I'm doing these press junkets with these guys, and I'm like, I, I grew up watching these people on television, and now they know my name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild. And so, but also they're 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 such masters at their craft. Um, in different ways, it's inspiring. I get to like be on set and just sit and watch and take take lessons and just being around them doing their thing helps make me a, 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 a better craftsman. So I feel very fortunate to be to be working with them, but also talking to them. Like John, John is a is a is a beautiful human being. Like they, it's very kind. I mean, just getting to know them um, has been has been really cool. That's awesome. And I was going to say to you about the old man. Um, so my boyfriend only likes to watch movies. He doesn't like to watch series. It's just he can't commit to it. Um, but when he can sit down and watch a series and he's like looking forward to it and then he's upset that the season is over, I feel like you guys have done something right. <laughs> he just like 
you know when that's coming back on? Do you know when that's coming back on? And I'm just like, don't you have a movie to watch? So, <laughs> so I just wanted to give feedback from our household. We love it. <laughs> Thank you. It feels like a movie. It feels very much like a movie. It's each episode feels cinematic. So I, I'm not surprised that movie lovers like your like your boyfriend are, are fans of it. It's it's told like a movie. It's it's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Emily, we got your boyfriend got to work on those commitment issues. And so I, yeah, that's that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it is such a great show. Um, I found myself binging it on Hulu, actually, but it's such a good show. So many twists and turns. And like most of the cast, your character is actually pretty complex as well. Um, you come across to viewers as empathetic and kind, like the scene at the bus stop, when you're not actually working as a special ops hitman. So how did you prepare to play this role? Oh, well, I I hope that there's there's some empathy in me as a human being that I can bring to the role. Um, there's definitely some murder in it. <laughs> I I think a lot of it is it's really good writing. It's really good writing, and and the directors that they get uh, for each episode kind of just give room and space for the actors to to collaborate and 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 play off of that writing. Plus, it. I mean, I, I've I've been fortunate enough to play a range of different roles, um, including folks who've who've uh, who have been in the military or or in law enforcement, but and then for big people who have been, you know, physicians and nurses, um, whose job it is to to specifically empathize and heal, and so bringing those elements because Julian is also a nurse who works at a hospice. Um, if he's bringing those elements in this one character that like, gives an opportunity to show more of a well-rounded person. Uh, yeah, before you get to see his background and 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 what you know what he's capable of, right? Yeah, and and so with all the the twists and secrets in the show, you know, season one just gives viewers that insight on the past of the characters, and so but there, it it seems like there's a lot more for fans. Like there's a lot more that we don't know about all these characters. So you know, are there any specific storylines that you would like to see explored in season two? Ooh, so like you said, there's a lot of reveals, so I can't I can't see say much. But oh, the, we're trying to get exclusive. Listen, we got. I know you are. I know you are. You did. You did. You don't get <laughs> nah, fired out here. You're saying too much. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, we can I always mean, bring you back to the federal government. Wait, I got you, man. You need a federal government. Job, no, I can get you. Oh, in there. oh hell no! Oh hell no! <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, the it's it's there's so many twists and turns, like you said, and ways that the, sh the show can go. And honestly, I think they're also largely developing and figuring it out right now. Um, to, what, what will sustain a whole nother season? Where do you, what, how do you, how do you enhance the arc of these characters and how they intertwine? So as far as me, like, I'm, I mean, I love watching the other actors and I, I want to see more like Dan Chase's story and, you know, his daughter and, and just, and him, him being, pursued and his pursuit but i'm very interested in seeing you know julian continue to to you know we're seeing more of julian's world you're seeing more you want to see more of where he goes and who he was and who he might become that's you like how i dance you that's all you're getting that's all we're yeah getting. exactly <laughs> all season two it was a good yeah, effort <laughs> We have service members in America's Armed Forces and their families are watching live all over the world right now. Would you like to, um, what would you like to say to them today? Ooh, child. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote me a book. Hold on. <laughs> oh, <perfect. laughs> no. um, I'm, I'm looking forward to where we can bring them all home and that we are and we have a citizenry that cares a lot more about where we send our soldiers to than than w what we represent now and and cares a lot more about what happens to them when they get back like it's it's absurd how how the armed forces are considered and and treated once they get back so i'm 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 looking forward to getting all these brothers and sisters home 
Now, and you have a lot of fans watching. As Emily said, you're receiving a lot of love in our live stream feed. So I'm going to share just a few comments. Um, Julie says she heard so many good things about the old man. They're all true. No one said a bad word. I haven't heard anything bad about the show. So definitely watch it if you haven't already. Mark says he still won't go near vacant houses in Baltimore. <laughs> Funny. Christine says she loves The Wire. And then the main question is, when is season two of The Old Man? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I think we'll start working it, like next year, but I don't know when it's going to come out. I know that they're already starting to work on it uh, to a certain extent now, I believe. Um, but I don't know when it's going to come out. Okay. We can't get anything out of him for season yeah, two. I know. Uh, Dang I, Come on. I wish, I wish I had more for you as far as that, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, your, your media team is wonderful. Man. Yeah. Man, tell you, man. <laughs> get, hey, kudos to his media team, man, because they got him, <laughs> got him good. So we recently got a chance to interview uh, two veterans who act, write, produce their own like short films and skits and plays. So what advice can you give to military members looking to transition out of the military and kind of go into acting? Ooh, I, I, I commend the effort because it's like going from one difficult job to another. <laughs> the, the, but, but yeah, it, the finding ways. It's so difficult in 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 the world, particularly the United States, where the the grind is like you know you gotta like work 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 to survive. You gotta you it was very seldom that we get to express ourselves creatively. So if anyone in the military gets an opportunity, especially after being in the military, to find a way to express themselves creatively, whether it's whether it's acting, producing, writing, uh, professionally or even privately, I highly encourage it. I would, I would say it starts with working on your craft. You know, it's going just finding finding ways to learn what it is you're trying to do and and practice it every uh, to me it's all practice you know yeah yeah and even if you want to do it professionally i, I think it's a, it's about finding ways to learn your craft um and doing it over and over and over now, now do you, are you do, are you getting into like writing and 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 doing doing more I, behind the scenes stuff, or or is that yeah? New? I've been I've been fortunate. I've I've produced a couple of films. I've I've I directed a short um, that went to Tribeca a couple of years ago. Um, I sold a show that I wrote uh, to NBC the year before last. So I've been pretty fortunate. Awesome. So viewers can get a load of your amazing acting skills on season one of The Old Man. It's available on streaming now. And um, Benga, we're so excited for next season, as you know, even though you can't give us a date yet. But <laughs> <laughs> what other projects are you working on? Um, there's a couple of things I can't mention because like it's it's still too early. Um, but there's some there's a there's some projects I'm putting together. Um, producer wise, that's also pretty early. Uh, season two of the old man. <laughs> 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 and we're so excited to see what's next for you and your career and all the characters that you portray um and for now because you won't give us anything else about the old man where can viewers go to follow you and keep um up you with can on instagram um which is at bengai kinabe oh my goodness look at that picture um and <laughs> at, it's the same at um at twitter but my first and last name i do have a pretty cool movie that's probably uh, hopefully coming out next next year uh called black flies um with um ty sheridan and um he's a texas boy um uh sean penn and mike tyson um it's it's a it's a it's a it's a really cool movie it's a really cool french director so look out for that um and and of course um the ghost which is one of the power spinoffs i think that'll be coming out uh, uh, you can catch me in that i think it'll be out this fall i'm not sure uh yeah and i think the upcoming season of wu-tang you might if you blink you, you'll you'll miss me but i'm in i'm in there somewhere <laughs> so did, did you say mike tyson and sean penn 
<laughs> I was, everyone always says that. But wait a second, did you say Mike Tyson so is casual. Sean Penn? <laughs> it was so casual. Just another day for Binga. <laughs> Listen, it's some ingredients that you mix together. I, I would never see Sean Penn and Mike Tyson as a, ingredients mixed together in anything. So that's got to be a very interesting set to be on. It is. It was. It was. And we got to shoot in Brooklyn. And, and so the director's really cool. And, uh, and Mike was really cool. Like, and Sean is, I'm, I'm Sean Penn, you know, like he's this legend. So, and Ty, I'm, it's actually the second um, movie I made with Ty, which is funny. Um, years ago, when he was much younger, uh, he, we did a movie um, called Detour that was set in California. It was a British production company and we shot it in South Africa. It was very, it was very interesting. Yeah, I got a chance to watch a couple of uh, podcasts with uh, Mike Tyson on there, and uh, you know he he was he was eating some vegetables that don't come on pizza, uh, but you can get mushrooms on pizza. But it, I don't think that was what he was eating. <laughs> but, yeah. I heard about that interview, and apparently he <laughs> ate a lot of them. <laughs> I heard about that interview. Yeah, yeah, he, he got some energy. We got to get Mike on the show. Like, hey, team, we got, I'm talking to the team That'd now. Team, great. we got to get Mike on the show. That'd be great. He's been doing a lot of he's been doing a lot of shows. I mean, he's he's had this a beautiful resurgence um, as far as his life and and all the wisdom that he's gained from the life yeah. he's led. Yeah, it's 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 been beautiful to watch. No, absolutely, and learn absolutely. from him. Absolutely. But um, for our chief chat viewers, uh, this episode will be be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends, or you can catch up with past episodes. Also. Be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on September 13th to hear from the actor Ernie Hudson, the one of the goats out there, uh, Ghostbusters yes. fame. And uh, mark your calendars for uh, September 22nd when actress Kyla Pratt joins the chat as well. So, man, we we got some heavy hitters here in September, man, starting with you. So uh, we appreciate you for kicking off our month uh, with, with, with a great show and just appreciate what you do uh, to support the military community. I know you start off in the federal government and and uh, like like some people that start off in federal government they're like you know what i need to find something as a, as far away as i can as possible to yeah so i i, I did do there was a, a a brief moment in in college where i was like you know what i'm done wrestling and then i realized i needed something more difficult in my life to help structure my life and so I went out for ROTC and they're like, you've never been in our, you've never been in ROTC and it was the end of the year, but you know what we got, we got this program at Fort Knox we send you to, I said, send me, I'll go. And so I went to officer basic camp at Fort Knox, which was wild. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, me, me coming into the military, I had no affiliation with the military. I had never been in ROTC and I just had a really, really good recruiter. Finesse, finesse me all, you know, it's, <laughs> it, <laughs> So I still I still talk to my recruiter, uh, you know, frequently. And, and I told him, I say, man, so he I'm gonna tell you the story real quick before we end the show. But um, so he told me to come into the recruiter's office. He told me to bring my check stub from McDonald's. So I was working at McDonald's as a junior in high school uh, in my senior year. So I bring in my check stub and it's probably was like two hundred sixty seven dollars and eighty nine cents for two weeks. Right. And so he gives me this military pay pay chart. And I look at it and I see commas. I had never seen a comma in, in, in my bank account ever in life. And I was like, man, y'all got commas on, on y'all payday? Like this is a this is a thing. And uh yeah, the next thing I know, I was duck walking in a in a MEP station. So it was <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he got you. He waved that green in front of you and oh, he, he took you all it, the way to the military. He, he sold me this ghetto dream and, and I, I followed it and <laughs> I, I ended my first enlistment with a four tours uh, that I was still paying on. So it was like, okay, well, I didn't get as much as, much as I thought I was going to get out of this first enlistment. Well, but it, it ended up being one of the best decisions I made in my life. And, uh, you know, just to think of the road that I traveled to get to this point where I'm actually sitting down interviewing an actor or uh, actors or, or celebrities and just, just been super blessed and fortunate to, to be where I'm at right now. So, like I said, I, I I just really appreciate you kind of really taking time to to, to sh shout us out and show us some love here on, on the segment. Uh, this means a lot to our nation's heroes, and, and we wish you all the best. Uh, if, if you don't mind hanging on the line till after the line is over, live is over with, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But I just want to 
to say thank you for what you do and, and giving us an outlet to uh to escape our reality sometimes because like you said we, we're we're downrange and in harm's way and uh we we need the we need a, the wire or or the old man to to kind of give us that escape to to so we won't have to focus on all the craziness that we're dealing with uh firsthand i i really appreciate you having me and i appreciate you guys doing this show and that's wild for you to say to me you appreciate it like you know thank me for what i thank you for what you all do you know on a day-to-day -day basis you know out there and back home just keeping the flame alive and then bridging this 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 gap now to with with this show so thank you for doing that and and, and this is a demonstration of you know military folks being creative and entrepreneurial and this is exactly what everyone needs to see so thank you appreciate you man so yeah if you don't mind just hanging on a little bit uh but we're going to end the show and thank you so much and chief chat out